Whoa. Hey, Fooj, these are beautiful. Yeah, I'm amazing. Hey, I'm the one that pushes your buttons. You just say cheese. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, it's been a minute since I've done one of these videos. Honestly, uh, Fuji and I have been very busy with life and work in general. Um, somebody was asking me the other day, you know, can you still have a six-figure photography business, you know, with all this AI and, and stuff happening? And I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? I'm like, I do have a six-figure business, bro, and it's with two cameras, the Fuji X-T4, Fuji and the Fuji X-H2S. Uh, we did not get the AI in the X-H2S. That's so, why do we have these letters? These letters are so weird, man. Anyway, in the H, no AI. In the Fuji. You know I rock. Right, exactly. Um, so if you follow my channel at all for a little bit of time, you know that I'm actually not about brands. Um, I don't really care what camera you're shooting, dude. You know, I'm going to give me anything you have to photograph a job. I'm going to put it on manual mode anyway. And uh, it's just a tool, man. All of your cameras are a tool. But I'm glad you're here because I have been focused on many different types of photography. And recently, I had a bride and groom couple that we went to uh, Longview Gardens. It's this beautiful estate um, with gardens and flowers and bushes and you name it. It's really neat. It's very pretty. And I just wanted to show you something. And the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is because it kind of matches up with, I don't care what brand camera you photograph. If you're normally shooting in raw mode, the raw image, you can treat it like a film negative, meaning the lab back in the day used to take your negative, put it under light and interpret, you know, your negative according to what they're looking at and give you their version of color contrast and exposure based on your negative. So the preview, the proof, the four by five proof that they give you was the person that developed those images. That was their rendition of how your negative looks. And this was their way of saying, hey, this is the best we think your image looks from this negative. It was really neat, actually. So as a digital photographer shooting RAW, you're using Lightroom or Capture One. So you're doing the same thing. Now, the neat thing about this is, look at this image here, okay? The neat thing about this is that you can have different looks from one image, all because you can manipulate all of the blacks, the exposure, the contrast, the mid-range, the highlights, like you can do all of that within Capture One and Lightroom. And when you are done with your um, correction, your color corrections, your you know minor editing, you export to a high-res JPEG and you're done. Your images are now lab ready, as we say. You can send them anywhere and get printed. Now, the neat thing about doing this is that, you know, Many people have a way they like their images to look. So depending on the style that you're trying to show the world that you are, you may underexpose or overexpose a little bit on purpose. That way your presets back home work better. And you only know this from you know trial and error. Do it and do it and do it. And then when you find something that looks good, you're like, hey, I like this a lot. The only thing I have to say about how much and how different you tweak your images from the normal, you know, exposure, that becomes something that people kind of expect to see from you. So if you have a operating business like I do, and this is my 30th year in business, if you are showing one way that you like your images, people get used to that and they fall in love of what you're doing and what you're producing and you're a good person so they like you and they give you five stars and your business grows well eight years from now if you go to change that look you may or may not lose some fans some subscribers some actual clients paying you money you know um i i know a handful of people that were doing the light and airy look from a few years ago and their stuff doesn't look like that anymore and um 
it's an eye opener. So I just want you to be aware of how you are processing your files and what are people liking and loving about you, your shooting style, and how you are delivering your images. So this image here, here is the original image. Still pretty, beautiful, done. Love Fuji's colors. Again, I do photograph in RAW, so I have this control after the fact. But this is what I'm going to deliver them. And I love those crushed blacks. You know, it makes it have that little matte kind of look in the shadow ranges. And a very, very, very slight um, vignette around the edges just to kind of bring in that light to the subject. This is something I would only do on maybe a few of these. And then the rest of the session, you know, the same kind of contrast and color tones match. But the dramatic version of what I'm showing them here is not needed in all of the images. However, the context and style of what I like and love stays true. Okay. My hashtag to my business is simple, clean, beautiful. So anyway, I just want to jump on here and tell you guys, uh, I have the Fuji X-H2S and good old Fuji here, the X-T4. I still, I still love my X-T4, man. I, I love how the, the knobs on the front, again, I'm a manual shooter. So here's ISO, here's shutter, here's your f-stop. Let's go. I mean, it's just like the film days, right? I still love how um, the X-T4 feels in my hands. It did take me a little bit of getting used to with this camera. But what I like about this camera is the improvements that I can see from the X-T4 to this one makes this one my main camera. And if you notice... Fuji here has the uh, Viltrox 75 1.2. This is my zoom lens. So I do wear the harness, which I swore I would never do in my entire life. Yeah, I do. This one's on my left-hand side. This is my right side. This is my shoot everything camera. When I want to shoot closer details, I grab this guy. Keep going. Let's rock. That's it. So anyway, I'm going to close out by showing you a few other images that I've done uh, recently, just so you can kind of like get a gist of what's happening. Again, I really don't think it matters what name brand you are shooting. Just learn how to shoot correctly, deliver to your clients, and let's all just move on. You know what I mean? But people who say they can't do it with a Fuji, okay, sure. What do you say about that, Fuji? Still a bit. Hey, that's not nice. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, look, I'm going to do some live streams soon because when I come home from jobs in the evening, uh, I may do a live stream and just show you what I'm doing in Capture One. Um, I am loving Aftershoot for culling. That makes such a difference of time on a job, like big time. So follow my community tab. I'll give you a little heads up when I'm going to go live on the live stream. And um, I'll see you in the next video. All right, you guys? Stay focused. Stay, what is it? Stay focused on your dreams. That's right. That's right. Stay focused on your dreams. See you next time. Peace. Yo, Fooch. Which one was your favorite? The one you took 50 of? No. The 75 mil. You think? Really? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. That, that was beautiful. It wasn't perfect. It was beautiful. You just see the technical. Uh, be quiet. <laughs> Lord. Later.